生喺呢度。咁一件恤衫做得好叻，第一個先決條件啦，先要合理身形嘅領型，配你個面型。嗰件衫係即係用好嘅手工、好個布料、好嘅配搭，咁做一件靚嘅恤衫出嚟。因為你三年咧，只係學識車嘢啫，就唔識財，唔識去度身，唔識去同人哋試身嘅。呢度做袋，我哋做嗰啲恤衫咧，嗰啲人係學咗好長嘅一段時間，跟咗佢三十幾年，咁佢就啊翻咗天國，咁我繼續承繼佢個精神。對服裝嘅認識My grandfather started this business in 1953. He originally was from Shanghai. When he got to Hong Kong, um, he basically was living in a relative's um, balcony area. Uh, and I uh, started going door to door, um, measuring people for shirts. Back then, uh, because there's a lot of Shanghainese businessmen who was accustomed to getting bespoke shirts uh, made to a certain standard uh, that they couldn't find in Hong Kong at the time. Most of the interesting things happen at a, at a fit level, and maybe how the different posture of a customer might affect the way a collar sits, or might affect the way the fabric kind of flows on the body, um, and that's what we adjust for. I joined the business. My father never really talked about his work. So I never really understood how our customers viewed us. Okay, got the team, yeah. Okay, okay. Until I started working in our New York store when I first graduated. Um, and then when you kind of 
listen to customer stories. Oh, you know, my, my father used to buy from your grandfather, and now I'm buying from from you. And so that's that 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 really I think had an impact on me. I felt proud, obviously, from what I heard from the customers, but also maybe a responsibility to, to keep things going. I started as a chef when I was 21. I was exec chef of a five-star hotel when I was 23. I think as a young chef, I always wanted to have my own restaurant, as most young chefs do, purely because food is how I express myself. That's my creative outlet. This is the food that I'm going to serve my way because I always had my own ideas about how things should be done. I like to talk about the restaurant in a very theatrical sense. You know, I, I compare it to the theatre because everyone has their own part to play. I always wanted it to be very detailed and, you know, as much importance placed on what the music is as to what the food is and how we talk to people, the words and the language that we use. I think all those different elements are just as important as one another. I want each guest to walk out of here feeling like they've had an experience that they couldn't have had anywhere else. You know, whether they had, <laughs> whether they had a good time or a bad time. The worst thing for me would, somewhat, would, would be for one of our guests to walk out and be indifferent. The biggest compliment for me is someone that comes in and is like, oh, I don't eat oysters, or I don't eat this, I don't eat that. And then they try it in the context of the dish that I've made and they become a, a convert. I always try through the dishes to get people to like imagine something. It's like creating new memories. You know, I think that's really, really powerful is actually having someone come in here and try something or be told a story through a dish that is completely new to them. And then they go back out into the world and spread the word. The front of the restaurant, you'd never know that there's a restaurant there, which we did on purpose because it is just like going to someone's house for dinner. Everything here is a reflection of my personal beliefs and style and philosophy. It's very much a reflection of, you know, what's up, what's up here. Lume doesn't actually mean anything. I chose that because it's a nice sounding word and also because I wanted people to come here with a clean slate, clean expectations. I started cooking because it was a challenge. It's a very creative industry, you get to work with your hands and every day is something completely different. It's important to look at where you've come from, but always in the sense of looking forward. I very much look to outside the industry for inspiration. I love listening to music, I love going to art galleries and you know, going to the theatre and all that sort of thing. Or talking, having a conversation with someone and it might trigger something that just kind of clicks into place but I tend not to draw inspiration from other chefs and I try to keep very focused on what I want to do and what I want to say through food.
I find myself more inspired by vegetables and plants and what's achievable with them. It's really interesting. When we have vegan guests come into the restaurant, which is such a big part of the market now, we want to give them a great experience. I guess as a chef, I'm just kind of responding to that direction. And for me, it, it's actually really exciting because it's, it's a challenge to, you know, figure out how to actually do that. It's an imagining something and then actually figuring out how to do it, put it on the plate. So I've developed a couple of different vegan cheeses, completely plant-based, and that's kind of come about through experimentation and responding to what our guests want. I actually have too many ideas and there's not enough hours in the day to actually make them happen. So I think it's always fitted the, the ethos that we have here of, of constantly evolving and innovating. And I'm still like that. I love creating new things more for the process. I find the actual process getting there is more satisfying, more exciting, creatively anyway. Man muss sich vorstellen, dass ein Instrument aus eine Geige aus 420 Gramm Holz besteht. Das ist so viel wie vier Tafeln Schokolade. Es ist fast nichts. Es ist ganz leicht. Und aus diesem bisschen Holz kann man eine Box bauen, auf der nachher ein Beethoven Violinkonzert gespielt wird. Fantastisch, oder? Das ist fantastisch. Und das ist etwas, was mich sehr, sehr, sehr fasziniert. Jeden Tag habe ich Lust, in meine Werkstatt zu gehen. Es gibt keinen Tag, wo ich das nicht gerne mache. Wunderschön. Als ich äh, 13 Jahre alt war, bin ich mit meinen Eltern in ein Konzert gegangen und ich konnte den Solisten sehen und er hat auf dem Cello gespielt. Und ich war so fasziniert davon, wie das Instrument geklungen hat und wie es ausgeschaut hat. Und ich habe gewusst, ich muss lernen, Cello zu spielen und ich muss lernen, wie man das baut. Ich habe so eine starke Hingezogenheit zu dem Material. Ich liebe es einfach und ich liebe, mit den Händen zu arbeiten. Ich denke, das ist die Basis dafür, damit man gute Dinge Erstaunlicherweise eine Erfindung, die Geige, die schon von Anfang an so gut wie perfekt war. Als die Geigen vor 300, 400 Jahren erfunden wurden, es hat sich deswegen nicht mehr sehr viel geändert, weil es einfach äh, von Anfang an perfekt war. So orientieren wir uns natürlich sehr, sehr häufig an klassischen berühmten Instrumenten, wenn wir welche bauen. Das Instrument, was wir bauen, ist jedes Mal eine Interpretation davon. Ist es eine der schwierigsten Aufgaben, überhaupt ein gut klingendes, fantastisches Konzertinstrument zu bauen? Einfach weil es so wahnsinnig viele Parameter gibt, die es zu kombinieren gilt. Es ist die beständige Suche nach dem perfekten Klang und nach der schönsten Geige, die man je gebaut hat. Die erste Geige, die ich komplett selber gebaut habe und fertiggestellt habe. Und ich war wahnsinnig stolz, als ich dort die Seiten aufgezogen habe und die zum ersten Mal gehört habe. 
Und in meiner Erinnerung klingt sie super fantastisch, aber ich möchte sie heute nicht unbedingt hören. Ich glaube, heute klingen meine Geigen besser. An jeder Ecke eine Abzweigung, wo man sich entscheiden kann oder muss, wohin es klanglich geht. Weil selbstverständlich entwickelt man mit der Zeit durch die Art der Arbeitstechniken, die man hat und auch durch das eigene Klangideal einen bestimmten Sound, der immer wieder reproduziert wird. Wenn die Geige fertiggestellt ist, dann bedeutet das für mich nicht, dass sie aus meinem Blickfeld verschwindet. Für mich ist es wichtig, dass meine Instrumente immer in einem perfekten Zustand sind, weil sie meine Visitenkarten sind. Ich mich immer sehr, sehr freue, wenn ich meine Kinder, meine Babys wieder auf die Werkbank bekomme. Die größte Inspiration für mich ist eigentlich immer die, gute Musik zu hören. Das, können, das sind Momente, wenn ich gute Musik höre, Geigenmusik, dann durchströme ich ein Glücksgefühl und denke mir, boah, das ist so super und das macht so Spaß, die zu bauen. Dann habe ich gleich wieder Lust, das Nächste anzufangen. Mit Glück schaffe ich fünf Geigen im Jahr fertigzustellen. Ich kriege sehr oft Einladungen von den Musikern, die meine Instrumente spielen, zu Konzerten, wo sie spielen. Das sind ganz besondere Momente, wenn man im Publikum sitzt, es wird still. Sie kommen auf die Bühne und sie spielen auf deiner Geige. Sehr berührend. Das ist wirklich sehr, sehr besonders und macht mich sehr glücklich. We have to address the design from internal spaces to actually make sense to the lifestyle of the owners. The client, they are always seeking to be simple and understated. With the new family members added in, he also wanted to have living spaces that belongs to the children and with the grandchildren as well. So in a sense, they want to live together yet autonomously. The idea takes on analogy of how the parents create a very close relationship with the children, closely connected stay close and stay strong. The house itself are done in concrete, but there are two types of concrete. One is the off-form concrete, which is a timber texture imprint. The other one is the fair face concrete with the round holes starts in the middle. Reason why I chose concrete is because it has a sense of permanence. It is uh, very robust at the same time. The whole house is a lot about crisscrossing circulations and connectivity. Here you don't see the floors connected to the wall. The whole idea is to allow the space fuse and flow past one another. This space connects you to the horseshoe bridge, the entrance foyer and to the living room. Itself is quite theatrical. 
when there are gatherings and even parties, the owners and the family members can talk to one another through this grand void space. This bridge belongs to part of the second house. There you can see it actually juts into this volume and interacts with the main block. I do screens in this bridge because it throws very good lighting and shadows onto the bridge itself, especially in the evening time. This screen is not done in timber. It's actually made out of aluminium, but it's uh, with timber texture. Once you open this up, the bridge will become natural ventilated. For the design of the house, I drew a lot of inspirations from the images I saw, primarily American architects. People like Paul Rudolph, that has built houses based on floating volumes. Windows especially, how they actually opens up to very strategic views. We're talking about concrete floating to create an effect and also functional because it provides a shelter for the cars. So this is an integrated approach, which is uh, one of the characteristics of architectural design. The whole idea of living in an environment like this is really not to distance yourself too far away. Because you really still want to see what's going on around with your neighbours. As you can see out there, it is also a space where people like to exercise, do their evening breeze walk, even in the morning. I think when the work is well done, it doesn't have to be shouting at you. What it does is very clear. You can feel that it connects to you because it is very soulful.